In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. In the past three weeks of the Great Lent, we have read and heard about three figures that interacted with the Lord. A few weeks ago, it was the Samaritan woman. Last week, it was the man that was paralyzed. And this week is the man that's born blind. There are many similarities between the three. The first similarity is that the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well, had something <coughs> that tied her to her way of life. She would wake up later to go get water from the well at a late hour. The paralyzed man sat by the pool waiting for the stirring of the water because he was bound to his bed. And the blind man sat at the gate of the temple begging because he was bound by his blindness. The Samaritan woman was bound by her own sin and her shame. The paralyzed man, Taban, was bound by his infirmity that the Lord hinted was as a result of sin. So the Samaritan woman was bound by her sin and the paralytic man was bound probably by sin. And the blind man was bound by a natural occurrence of being born blind. All three were stuck, bound, bound as in like my hands are tied. You know, when someone says, can you help me with something? I really need you to do this, this and this. And the other person says, no, my hands are tied. I can't, I can't do anything. I'm stuck. Clearly, what the Lord offered all three of these figures was release from their binds, freedom. The Samaritan woman, when the Lord freed her from her bounds or what she was binded by, she was able, whereas before she avoided everyone, she was able to preach the word of God freely, not afraid anymore. The paralytic man, whereas before he had no one, he said, I have no man to put me in the pool when it stirred. Where he felt that he had no one and there was nothing he could do. He was freed from his binds. The bounds that were tying him together, he was freed. Sorry, there's the alarm's going off. We're going to fix it right now. It's nothing. The blind man, who was also bound, perhaps not from his sin, not just perhaps, the disciples asked, they said, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? The Lord answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. So this binding was not by sin. In all three, the circumstances are different, but the Lord is the Savior. So we see finally that the Lord is our salvation. I'm going to read to you a verse from the Psalms. It's Psalm 117. The psalmist says, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and broke their chains in pieces. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. I'll read it again for those that are kind of distracted. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from out of their distresses. This is before Christ. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death 
and broke their chains in pieces. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. As we approach the coming passion and resurrection, we begin to understand and experience that these chains that have bound all of us were broken by Christ on the cross. And these figures that we read about are specific moments where the Lord actually freed people from their, uh, their entrapment, their prisons. And through His resurrection, He freed us too. The key with the story of the blind man is this allegory or idea about being blind. It's very clear. If you're blind, you cannot see. If you go to a blind person, it's like obvious, I know. But if you go to a blind person and you say, can you see my face? He'll tell you, no, I can't see anything. Whether it's your face or your hands or behind you or in front of you, I can't see anything. I'm blind. Those that are blind spiritually don't understand because they don't know and they can't see. So when the Lord specifically gives a blind man sight in front of the Pharisees on the Sabbath, He clearly is making a big point. Because the blind man who had no dignity was a beggar. Everybody knew him, but they knew him by face only, and by that's the blind man that sits at the door of the temple. He had nothing. He even was so low that he accepted alms from others because he had no way to provide for himself. When the Lord healed him from his blindness, he stood with courage against the Pharisees. The Pharisees asked him, Give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. And the blind man Answering the Pharisees, I don't think we understand how much power the Pharisees had over the people. They were God. They're the ones that taught, they're the ones that explained, and they're the ones that did. So whatever the Pharisees did was as if God himself was doing in the eyes of the people. And so if the Pharisees were good, the people were good and knew God. But if the Pharisees were lacking, then the people thought that God was something that He was not. Do you understand? So their presence or their representation of God made a big impact on the people. And that's why the Lord was so angry at their hypocrisy. Because they made it as if the Lord never provided any forgiveness. That the Lord was not long-suffering. That the Lord did not understand the plight that we were going through. While the Lord Himself stands among them, and tells them, I understand the people's plight. I understand their jail. I understand the bounds that they're binded by. I want to loose them, but you stand in my way. So when they asked the blind man, the blind man said, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. It's a very good answer. I don't have anything to do with that. I'll tell you what I know. I know that I was blind just a few minutes ago, and now I see. And ironically, the Pharisees, speaking to a blind man about receiving his sight, are blind to the fact that the Lord just provided for them a, a wonderful miracle. Like, the man was born blind, like had no eyeball. And the Lord had created in him sight. And the Pharisees, because of their internal blindness, couldn't see and couldn't understand. And because they couldn't see and couldn't understand, they were so stuck on this idea that the sinner is doing things on the Sabbath, completely ignoring that he had, he had healed a blind man. The same thing happened with the paralytic man. They saw a paralytic man holding his bed. And instead of saying, wow, what a wonderful occurrence. You're good now. You're okay. You're walking because they could see the bed, he was holding it. They said, who did this? 
And why did he do this on the Sabbath? So sometimes, if we're blind, we don't see the grace of God. If we ourselves have been given this newness of life, this is called the Sunday of Baptism, because we see in this story what we received when we were baptized in the Father, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When we were baptized, we received, like St. Paul says today, we became a new man. Like we've become different. Whereas before, we didn't know the Lord as Gentiles, and even the Jews didn't quite know the Lord because they had the Pharisees and their hypocrisy in their way of the true sight of God. Now we know God. There's no excuse. When we were baptized, we received Him in our hearts. He's the one that tells us, don't do this. Don't say that. Don't go there. Don't try that. And of course, it's up to us. If we want to do, we do. If we want to go, we go. If we want to try, we try. But those that live in Christ, listen to that voice. Understand that the bonds that I've been tied by have been broken once and for all. So like I've said before, we can willingly go back to those binds and bind ourselves up again. Or we can live in the new person that is Christ, actually. And we can see with open, clear eyes when we see our brothers and sisters in Christ, if we see them with this new eye that's been created by the Lord that lives within us, we see peace and comfort and forgiveness because we learn from our Father. So, if we're willing to live like this in this newness, in this openness, with clear sight, then when we see our brothers and sisters in distress, we no longer judge, but we offer help. If we see our brothers and sisters in Christ tied by sin, we do our best to help bring them out. Not to put them down even more. Not to shut them out. Not to keep them far. If we see our brothers and sisters in Christ and we see the goodness, then we no longer notice the bad. We're free from that. We've been awakened, we've been given our sight, our bonds have been loosed. The last thing is what the Lord said to the Pharisees. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. It's an important thing to understand. If we live this next Passion Week, this week that's coming after this week, the next week, we have two weeks towards the resurrection. If we live and we ask the Lord, Lord, I know I may be blind still. I know I might not be seeing clearly. Help me to see clearly. Help me to see what you want me to do. Help me to see how you want me to serve. Help me to see what you want me to say. then the Lord can give you. Because if you ask, you shall receive. But if you think that, خلاص, I know what I'm doing, I see very clearly, everything is obvious, then you won't receive. Because the Lord said, now you say, we see, therefore your sin remains. So ask the Lord honestly. Lord, I know I might not be seeing very clearly. Help me to see, help me to understand. Help me to forgive. Help me to love. Help me to be long-suffering. Help me to be patient. Help me to be courageous. Help me to provide love to my brothers and sisters. If we do that, then the Lord will give you freely. There's nothing that He would rather hear than for you to say, Lord, I need you to open my heart and my eyes. So if you ask Him in these next couple of weeks, then when you experience the resurrection once and for all, you see His glory clearly, because you're no longer blind, and you're ready to follow in the footsteps of the disciples, 
and preach the word, the word through our love that we have, that he's given to us and that we've provided back to our brothers and sisters in Christ. May the Lord give us all this great grace, which is the opening up of our eyes that we actually ask for, so that we may see clearly and understand what he wants from us. And glory be to God forever. Amen.